Thank you, Mr. Sidi. Tell us about uh, the motion, the stripping of twelve in the Victoria. Thank you. Um, we heard about the collective motion of animals and people and those things. Um, today I'm going to talk about a different thing that is sperm. We use bovine sperm in our experiment. Um, you can, when we put them into vitro elastic fluids, you can see that they form those clusters. Um, some are larger than others, some are pairs. You can see that it's a very dynamic process. There are they can be, the, the one cluster can split, um, new cells can join to the cluster and, and they, they can separate from them. Um, my name is Chi Kwan Tong, I started this work at Cornell University in Mimi Wu's group, somewhere. Um, there was a collaboration with the Cornell Vet School at Students for West Lab. Um, I just joined the faculty at North Carolina a and in January. So this is how our swimmer are like. So we use full sperm as I said. So they have a head, it's kind of pedal shape. 10 microns long, 5 microns wide, 1 micron thick. And there's a long tail, 50 to 70 microns long. You can see here that the B is mostly a 2D beating. They, they, they do have some 3D components. It's mostly a 2D beating. Um, there's one more thing I want to tell you about is, is this. So here you see a bright line here. There's a sidewalk. Here the sperm swimming down. Um, once it hits the wall, it'll stay there. So what I'm trying to say is they have very strong affinity to a solid surface. So all, most of the videos I show you are primarily a, a 2D phenomenon. So when we add polymer into the fluid to make the fluid viscoelastic. Um, this, is, this is how it will be like. So if we can add different amount of fluid. So if we add less, you can see there are, there are slightly, you can still see the clustering, but it's slightly less. And if we do more, you can see they are forming larger group, and there are more cells in those clusters. Um, I want to emphasize one thing that is those kind of clustering is not something they naturally do. Um, so if we don't have viscoelasticity, if it's in a regular medium or we just add a different kind of polymer so that it's a Newtonian viscous fluid, you don't see the similar clustering effect. So you really need a viscoelastic fluid there in order for them to form this kind of cluster, the clusters. All right. So. We try to so we try to understand a little bit about those clusters. See what see what see what's what's happening there. Um, the first thing we did as physicists, we try to get some kind of land scale, right? We want to we want to get something. And, and in phase transition, we know that things that are the natural land scale is the correlation length. So we measure the correlation functions. We measure the orientation correlation. So that's the orientation between different sperm. Um, so you can see three things. One is that once we have a viscoelasticity in the fluids, the correlation length is extended a, a, a lot more than in, in regular medium or just viscous fluids. The second thing is the correlation function is a very good exponential decay. Um, this is semi log plus, so, so this line pretty much shows it's more or less an more or less it's exponential decay, so I don't think you get much better than this from biological systems. And the, and, the, and the third thing is this decays goes to zero. So that says you don't have a, you don't exist a residual long range orientation order there. So when you go to really long, so, it's, so, so, all, the, so all the orientation order here we observe are range bound. There is nothing go extend that. So what does that mean? Um, because we do see phase coexistence, right? We have individual ones in the clusters coexist together, which is the signature of first order transition. And it is common that in first order transition, if you do this kind of correlation length, what you are effectively measuring is kind of cluster size. Because once you go beyond the boundary, there is no, the, the, the order doesn't go beyond. So the good thing is we can actually independently measure the cluster size. So that's what we did. This is kind of not surprising once we have. Once we have the viscoelasticity, you see the distribution skewed towards the, the larger clusters. 
The one thing I want to emphasize is here is in the Insta that if we look at a log log plot, so we have a parallel scaling of this side, cluster size distribution. This is not really surprising because this has been seen in like animal herding or bacterial swarming, but, but, but this is another, another comparison that we are, how those, how those clustering compare with other systems. Um, we want to understand the, the microscopic mechanism, how they interact with each other. So we put tracing feeds into, into our systems. Here is what, we, what, what, what you look at when, we, when sperm swim by, all those are tracing feeds, and in a regular medium. You can see that when sperm swim, it generates a flow backwards, which pushes the feeds backward. It's unsurprising, right? So now we look at the viscoelastic medium. You can see that those sperm are swimming, there are beads there, they oscillate with the flagellum, right? But you see very little net movement there. So what it says here is, in the viscoelastic medium, the flow field is actually smaller. Therefore, the interaction cannot come from the hydrodynamics, the flow of the generated by the sperm, but it has to be something else. Um, the one something else here is the elastic component of the medium. So here, so here is the plot I'm trying to emphasize the elasticity of the medium. Um, instead of just looking at the beads, we can, we can trace, see how the beads move with the flagellum. If, if we have a boundary here pushing the fluids and we have beads there, in uh, incompressible fluids, they have to go in phase, right? Because, because the fluids are incompressible. Now, now if we have spring in between, when we, go, when, we, when we go this way, we are compressing the spring, and therefore this creates a phase lag. This speed will not come back until the spring got, got, got extended, right? So, so there will be a phase lag here. It doesn't look much here, but this is like on average 20 degrees over this, I don't know, 1,000 degrees. So, so, this, so there is a clear phase lag here emphasizing the role of elasticity. So how can the elasticity of a medium to create a collective dy dynamics like this we observe here? Um, we found two literatures. Um, we don't actually, we haven't numerically put them together yet, but the two literatures suggest there might be a path. One is this, so, th so, so this is numerical simulation work. They put in a lot of, a lot of swimmers, and they, they are connected by springs, so it's purely elastic couple. And under different conditions, you can see that they found that one of the cases you can show is they'll form those parallel, parallel, they'll swim towards the same direction. One other will be forming for vortex, that'll be like a circular pit. Um, the other work they did was they have those spinning disks, so those are the active objects, and they don't interact with each other normally. But once you put in a lot of passive disk, the passive objects, because of the elasticity of those passive medium, they become to interact with the, uh, each other and, and attract. So the distance between each other decrease. So put the, those two get together, that, that, can, that can give us the, that, that, that might give us a mechanism. So let me summarize here. We found sperm move collectively in viscoelastic fluids. Um, it's a dynamic clustering. Um, it's consistent with other collective movement and and uh, then the physical existence. Um, the interactions primarily from the elasticity. Um, um, this can be this can be explained as one of zero fold on mode, and we are still exploring what's the biological benefit of this kind of cluster. <coughs> um, I want to thank uh, Miming as well this lab, um, people for discussion, funding from NIH. I'm a physicist, I don't go to the farm to do things with animals, in case you're curious. The semen symbol were provided by GeneX, and we use those facilities. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, a short question. Is the seminal plasma uh, viscoelastic as well? Like in a natural medium, do you see this collective motion in bull sperm? Um, I don't think there is a very good way to look into, say, bovine cervix right now at this scale, so I cannot answer. We do have, we do take the cervical mucus out and we try to, 
the reason we started this work was to mimic the, cer the cervical mucus. Okay. So that's what motivated us originally. But, but hopefully they do. I, 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 I can't say a whole lot right now because it's, it's, it's hard to get those samples. So, so yeah. Very you said. Um, have you, like, what size of polymer you're using? Have you thought about like depletion interaction? Because, for example, Poon reported like a clustering of E. coli. If you put polymers, the E. coli clusters, and it's just because of depletion. It has n not much to do with viscoelasticity. Have you thought about depletion interaction in your system? Uh, Do they uh, cluster when they're dead? Oh, they're not dead. They're they're. Oh, the tissue kills them. Do they cluster? Yeah. I'm sorry if I. They cluster if they're dead. So if your sperm was dead. So no, 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 no. Usually not. They 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 die. They die something. If if they, okay, there are a couple of things. They can stick to each other, which is not always see here. Here they 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 don't actually stick. Sometimes when they die, they might stick to each other. But that's a that's a but that's a chemical that's, that's some surface chemical thing there. We we it's not the same. Another thing. Although you know, depletion interaction are modified in epic systems, and so I don't know that you can necessarily disentangle the two. No, 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 I know, I know what you're talking about. That's, that's, that's a good point. But, uh, <coughs> no, but the fact that it doesn't happen when they're bad doesn't mean necessarily oh. that it's not depletion. So, uh, yeah. Other questions? Ooh, Roberto, up there. Sorry. So I could see in some movies that, uh, as it uh, was already observed, that flagella can um, uh, wave in synchrony. So do you, do you observe any change in this synchronization between waving of flagella when you move from uh, um, viscous solvent to a viscoelastic solvent? So there are a couple different things. So so. So in some cases, so the two heads are attached to each other, you can see you can see that the flagella beating is like totally synchronized. That's that's the movie that's show, showing up there. So there are like three, I think three sperms, the the the, 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 the flagella is completely synchronized. On the other hand, if we look at the viscoelastic medium when they're swimming side by side, they are not attached, it's viscoelastic, you can see that it's kind of slipping away slowly. They do have some Kind of, they do have some kind of synchronization, but, but they do slip away slightly. So if you think, if you think of the way from the from the from the spring in between, because of this phase lag, the the, the the elastic medium is kind of facilitating them to have a slightly different phase, right? I, I I think there is something to do with this, so so that so that so to to make them the phase kind of sliding slowly. <laughs> okay, I think we move on to the next topic. Thank you.